30 years of, make, of jewellery making, I bought some Delft clay. Does it dry out? Can you burn the clay? What is the shelf life? Any hints on using wax models in lieu of hard models? So does it dry out? Does it dry out? In theory, no, because the binder is an oil. It's not water, so the oil does not evaporate. But saying that, I always keep mine in a bag with the top sealed anyway, just to keep it as fresh as possible. What was the other question though? Uh, can you burn the clay? The clay does burn. When you pour the molten metal into the mold, as soon as the metal hits the sand, the oil will burn. It turns black, and once it's turned black, you can't reuse that little area where the metal has touched the clay. But that will only go into the clay about perhaps two, three millimeters at max. What you have to do is scoop out the burnt black bits, scoop that to one side, throw that away, and what is left in the mold, you can push back out to reuse, put it back in the bag, fold the bag over, and save it for next time. And the other question? Uh, what is the shelf life and hints on using wax models in lieu of hard models? Okay, so the shelf life is pretty much indefinitely. As I said, keep it in a bag so keeps the moisture out but keeps the sand, the delft clay, nice and fresh. Some people will suggest when you've poured the metal into the mould, you put the mould in water. Now, even though they say that doesn't hurt the sand because there's oil in the sand, I don't like to do that. I don't like to introduce water into the sand because there may be a chance that the water will get into the sand at some point. And if you use that sand with a little bit of moisture in it, it could uh, pop. The moisture could um, want to expand quickly. If it's very deep into the sand, the clay itself, it could pop push the mould out and I would not want to take any chances. So I never put the mould with the molten metal in, in water. Let it cool down, break it open, scrape the burnt bits out, reuse what we've got. We can use wax models. Wax models are great because you can carve it and shape it. But what you cannot do is have any models with underhangs. For instance, if you had a square shaped, uh, that's a terrible uh, signet ring. Yeah, so there's my, oh, that's a terrible signet ring. There. Anyway, it's a square shaped or rectangular shaped signet ring that is actually that shape. Okay, if it was like that, no problem at all, you could cast it. But if you wanted to say put a little groove in here like that, Okay, and that comes around like this. If you wanted to put a groove in like that, you would not be able to do it because looking at the head, you've got these little cutouts. This is going to be called an under overhang. Sorry, this is an overhang. When you push this into the mold, there is a chance that you will not be able to pull out the ring because the sand comes underneath the uh, underhang. And as you pull the model out, it will pull the sand out. So something like this, I would say no. If you want to drill holes into the head, you cannot do that in the wax. It has to be done afterwards. Likewise, if you wanted to put this groove down the outside edge of your signet ring, you would put that in afterwards. So no overhangs, nothing like this. You can use a wax, not a problem. And you can use anything. Um, I think the first piece of jewellery that Louise made was a shell for her daughter. Great. Shells can be pushed into the sand, filling in the little hole where the little creature goes in, but fill that in with a bit of blue tack or a bit of um, clay, a bit of um, wax to stop this sand going into it. So literally anything that can withstand the pressure of being pushed into the sand is a great model. It can be wax, it can be clay, it can be stones, it could be shells, anything. You wouldn't be able to push anything like leaves into it. The leaves are too soft and they're gonna disform and disfigure and crush. So leaves, no. Ball bearings, 
to make the ends of torque bangles. We do that so many times very often and that is a great example of being able to make solid balls. We got this video on YouTube that I decided to take with a little vlogging camera and I'm all over the place. Um, yeah, it's a funny one. Go and see it when you've uh, finished watching the Q&A. So yeah, anything like that would be absolutely brilliant. No words at all. Absolutely brilliant. Yes. I just love it that it's so... Once you know the do's and don'ts, it's quite quick. So if something goes wrong, nothing is really wasted apart from a little bit of the clay that's immediately burnt around the metal and you can just remelt and go again. Yes. It's just, yes. yeah. The kind one, of like low risk, isn't it? It is very mm. much, yes. Apart from, the, obviously, take all the health and safety things into, into consideration. <laughs> but in terms of materials, cost, it's low risk, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. And also, don't forget, when you do put the uh, take the model out of the mould, do put the air holes in. Now, one thing that I would suggest is that some people will, will get quite a large object and put big air holes from the model outwards. I would be inclined not to do these large air holes. The reason being is that the metal will go into those air holes. And whilst that is not a problem, it just means you've got more finish and you've got to cut those little bits of channels where the metal has gone down. You've got to cut them off and it could spoil the model. For me, all I do is literally get a blade. I would get like a knife. Okay, like a knife and literally with a knife or a scalpel, draw the thinnest lines out to the air holes. It just has to let air out. It doesn't have to let metal out. So just draw very, very slight lines. If they're too big, the metal will travel and then you've got lots more cleaning up to do. So just make sure your air lines, your air holes are nice and thin and your mould to be absolutely fantastic.